In the next couple of videos, we're going to look at the particle in a ring model system. Now, this is very similar to the particle in a box in that within a certain region of space, you have a zero potential and you have an infinite potential outside of that region. But instead of the particle in a box where you have two boundary conditions, one where the, so the wave function has to be zero at both ends of the box, in the particle in a ring model system, you have a periodic boundary condition. This ring doesn't have any walls, but all you're constrained is that your wave function at any point in the ring has to be the same, whether you're at, for example, zero or two pi radians here. So going around two pi radians, you should end up at the same value for the wave function and have the same first derivative for the wave function as well. So for this model system, we're going to be looking to solve the Schrodinger equation, as always, h psi equals e psi. And there are several ways to derive how we get to the one-dimensional form of the system, but I'm going to start with a 3D system and uh, basically boil that down to the 1D system, and hopefully we'll learn some things about uh, separation of variables and those sorts of things along the way. So our Hamiltonian, as usual, will be uh, minus h bar squared over 2m times the Laplacian operator in three dimensions uh, plus the potential which in principle is in three dimensions. So our potential energy function, let's define that, our V of R, theta, and phi, this is going to have two types of values. It's going to be zero if our radius R equals big R. <clears throat> so this orange dotted line here on this uh, purple circle here, those are all the values, uh, those all have the value of R equals capital R there. So R equals R and theta, the azimuthal angle in green here, theta equals <clears throat> pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So under those two constraints that R, equal, R is fixed and theta equals 90 degrees, what you get is this one dimensional ring here. You get a circle for for your system there. So there's a circle where the potential energy is zero. And any point outside that circle, the potential is infinite. So the potential being infinite outside the circle constrains our particle to stay inside this circle. And thus we get the particle in a ring because this circle becomes our ring and becomes the domain of our wave function. So what we can say is from the, right off the bat is that psi of r theta phi equals zero if r is not equal to r, to big R, or theta is not equal to pi over two. So this really gives us a wave function which is just going to be a wave function in the end of the coordinate phi, the azimuthal angle here, away from this with this fixed polar angle and this fixed radius. Okay, so that's our potential. And then for this psi of phi, that's going to be the psi of big R pi over 2 phi. Okay, so then that's our potential. Now let's look at reducing the kinetic energy down to one dimension. So in three dimensions, we've got this Laplacian operator here. And our Laplacian, uh, if we're doing this in spherical polar coordinates, is more involved than it is in Cartesian coordinates. So let's just write that down. We have 1 over r squared, partial derivative with respect to r, times r squared, partial derivative with respect to r, plus 1 over r squared sine theta, and then we have partial derivative with respect to theta times the quantity sine theta partial derivative with respect to theta. Then continuing on to the next line plus dot dot dot. Our final term is 1 over r squared sine theta second partial derivative with respect to phi. Okay, so how can we simplify this out? Well, first of all, we have a fixed r, so r is not going to change. We can only have one value of r where our wave function doesn't equal zero. So the, so the Laplacian with respect to r, the derivatives with respect to r are going to be zero because r is fixed. 
Similarly, any derivatives with respect to theta, the polar angle, that is going to be fixed as well at pi over 2. So the derivatives with respect to that are going to be 0 because it is fixed. And what we have left is this 1 over r squared sine theta, second derivative with respect to phi, the azimuthal angle in the xy plane. And we know that r is, r is going to be fixed to be our big R, our constant radius. So little r squared is going to be big R squared. And the sine theta, theta is fixed to be pi over 2, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So that's just going to be 1. So we get r squared times 1, or just r squared. And then that gets multiplied times second derivative with respect to phi. And our wave function now is only a function of one uh, variable. It's only a function of phi. So this partial derivative as well can become an ordinary derivative. So if I rewrite our Hamiltonian here on next page, we have that h equals this minus h bar squared over 2m holds over minus h bar squared over 2m. We pick up a factor of 1 over big R squared from the denominator here. So it's 1 over minus h bar squared over 2m r squared. And then this second partial derivative becomes an ordinary derivative, d squared d phi squared. And with respect to our wave function of phi, our potential is 0 because we're constraining uh, the radius and the polar angle to be uh, values where the potential is 0. So our potential is 0 within this region. So this ends up being our total Hamiltonian. And then the Schrodinger equation that we're finally going to have to solve is just going to be h psi of phi equals e psi of phi. So this is the Schrodinger equation, the Hamiltonian, which we will use to solve this Schrodinger equation for the energies and for the wave functions of the particle in a ring.